Hello, and welcome to episode three of our eight-day anniversary special of Around the Verse. Today, we are celebrating our alien ships and our ground vehicle manufacturers. I'm Sandy Gardner. And I'm Chris Roberts. So on today's show, we're gonna head out to the farthest reaches of our universe to explore some of the more unusual ships in Star Citizen. The Jean, Vandal, Tavaran, and Banu all have unique cultures and to go along with it, unique ship designs. From the verticality of the Jean vessels, to the aggressiveness of the Vandal fleet, the reliance on shielding in the ancient Tavarian designs, to the trade-focused Banu, who incorporate a little bit from all three with their own elegant stylings. These alien ships really let our artists and designers unleash their imaginations. In fact, we'll be hearing a bit more about one particular Banu ship I know you're all keen to hear about, that is currently in the pipeline a little later on this show. But before that, let's discuss exploring planets. With the moons of Crusader coming to the game, our designers have been working on creating an exciting lineup of land vehicles, perfect for traversing a wide variety of terrain. The most recent addition is the Cyclone from new vehicle manufacturer, Tumbrel. So specializing in tough and dependable exploration vehicles, Tumbrel is actually not that new. The company was originally founded in 2563, where it met with initial success, but was sadly forced to close its doors a few centuries later. Thankfully, a group of investors purchased the Tumbrel land system and began manufacturing updated versions of their classic designs in 2947. The inaugural design of the new Tumbrel is the rugged and variable Cyclone series. Let's check in with Jared, our artists and designers for Ship Shape, to see how the Tumbrel Cyclone and the Bennu Merchantman are shaping up. Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another edition of the brand new Ship Shape, where we provide the latest news on ships coming to Star Citizen, interviews with the developers, and I stand here in front of a green screen like a weatherman giving you the forecast. I'm your host, Community Content Manager Jared Huckabee. Behind me on said screen is the ship pipeline, an ever-evolving, continuously refined network of phases, stages, and checkpoints necessary before a fun idea becomes a fully fleshed out spaceship. On today's show, we're sitting down with the team members working to bring two exciting new additions to the Star Citizen universe. First up, let's check in with some of the team working in our studios to bring the Tumbrel Cyclone to life. The Cyclone is a two-man vehicle, uh, a pilot or a driver and a navigator. You can also swap out the module for a turret in the back, which is also manned, so you can have up to three people. It's transportation with like a focus on um, speed and maneuverability, like a fusion of a Humvee and a Jeep. It's got kind of the utility of a Jeep, so it's very all-terrain, but it's like rugged like a Humvee. You know, it's strong and sturdy. There's a lot of exposed parts, um, and it's very off-road, you know. There's actually a specific variant designed for racing, so it will have the ability to boost. It's got a really tight turning radius. It was sort of a uh, first in a lineup from Tumbrel. It was, a, you know, a new company. It was a good opportunity to sort of work on new aesthetics, new designs, you know, really sort of work on what makes us interesting. So this is basically a mixture between, a, you know, sort of military Humvee and, uh, you know, like a Paris-Dakar off-road 4x4. Comes with multiple modules, so players can sort of choose the kind of experience they want. So it can just be sort of, you know, ragging it off-road, you know, as fast as they can or they can swap out to, to a missile um, pod or an EMP pod or a, a cargo pod. So basically it's pretty, it's, it's pretty darn flexible. The difference between the Cyclone and the other land vehicles is that it's less of a utility vehicle. The, the Rover is more of a, like a, it's got more combat capabilities and a little bit more storage, but it's kind of more like a, like a box that just travels. The Cyclone is more of a, just a, a just a vehicle. It's more like just a truck that you can either store stuff on or you can swap out the module in the back and do different utilities depending on what, what you switched out. This is a, basically another surface vehicle to add to the fleet or to, to your garage. You know, you'll have your um, like habitation pods, you know, on, on, on your planet. You know, you'll be able to park your, uh, your uh, tumbrel uh, cyclone next to it. But, you know, really the point of it is that, yeah, you can go exploring. Play it your way, isn't it? Basically, it's, you know, what do you want to do today? Where do you want to go? You know, you just point your nose and off you go. This way, you know, players will be able to choose 
choose what you know which version of the buggy they want. Hopefully they pick the right one and they don't find too much trouble. I think the biggest challenge in designing it was the modularity aspect of it because having to be able to swap out those pieces and how that was actually going to work and function. So you have the turret or the anti-air or the recon or the racing versions, like what the functionality for each of those was going to be and how that made the vehicle unique when you swap them out and what kind of gameplay that actually facilitated was a kind of one of the biggest challenges. We wanted to kind of make sure that each each module, when you swapped it out, filled a different role. So if you put the turret in, you'd have more of a combat, ground combat vehicle. If you put the anti-air one in, you'd have more of a, a support vehicle that could take down ships in the air, but also support ground troops by making sure that they weren't taken out by uh, air vehicles. The recon uh, version, we wanted to have a scanner that would allow you to map uh, terrain and store all of that data, also allowing you to pl like place beacons and kind of make landing zones or mark targets or something like that. The racing version, we just wanted to give it a like a boost, like kind of like an afterburner or a nitrous boost, kind of give it one the fastest speeds and better tuning. It is one of the fastest vehicles, uh, wheeled vehicles that we have. The Nox is faster than it, but it's it's got that grab love technology. But yeah, it's pretty fun and it's also uh, quite maneuverable. Uh, the four wheel turning and the four wheel drive gives it speed and turning radius. Right now, I just finished with the gray box art and I'm moving into final art. So I'm applying a lot of palms and decals and stuff like that and doing material work. But the final mesh is basically done. From me, it goes to design and animation. Design will be controlling, actually it's pretty much set up for design, at least the white boxes, but they'll be fine tuning it and getting it to drive the way that they want it to and feel the right, like, have the right feel. Animation will be like getting the shocks to work and the characters to get in and out of it and looking nice, you know, and then of course sound will take a pass at it and then tech art and effects will make it blow up and look pretty exploding. And they should have a lot of fun, you know, this vehicle's, you know, it's got a few, it's got quite a few sort of interesting features. It's got some unique styling, you know, we've tried to push you know, we tried to sort of push on sort of new materials. It's a, an external frame and then everything is sort of bolted it onto the interior of it or bolted onto the side. So it's kind of got an exoskeleton and then we sort of push for 3D printed sort of materials in there. I think it'll be interesting to see what players do with it. It's pretty fun to drive around right now and we're going into grey box. So we're actually going to create the geometry for it based on what we had for the white box and it's looking pretty good. I think some of the issues that we're running into with it is the modularity, so like actually having to swap out stuff, being able to control that thing through item 2.0, uh, like having missiles fire with the pilot controlling the missiles and then actually aiming the missiles, um, then like swapping out all the other modules and how that's gonna work. We also wanted this open suspension on the vehicle and I think the suspension that we had on the Rover and the Grey Cat wasn't as articulated or detailed as the what we want on the Cyclone. We have to go back and kind of change how we're doing our suspension parts and maybe add a few more options to that to get it uh, looking as uh, cool as we can. I can't wait for the mounted gun attachment on the back. I, I feel like that will make it like your your typical FPS like Jeep vehicle. And that's going to be really fun having somebody in the back on the turret, you know, having a, a somebody riding shotgun and just like tearing up planets. That's going to that's I think that's what's going to make the tumbrel special. You know, the cyclone, tumbrel cyclone. Now, space bikes are cool. I've got nothing but awesome things to say about space bikes. But there's also a lot to be said for feeling the ground beneath your wheels as you're covering the desolate terrain of one of Crusader's moons. And the Tumbrel Cyclone looks to fit that bill quite nicely. On the ship pipeline, I'm pleased to report this little buggy has off-roaded its way through the entirety of Greybox phase and entered the modeling and surface tweak stage of final art. Versatility, maneuverability, and power. It's almost here. Up next, we're checking in with some of the team members working on the... Oh heck, I don't want to spoil it. Check it out. The Banu Merchantman um, is an interesting one for us. It's been around for a long time. 
people are waiting uh you know people are really hoping for the ship to come out soon and it's had some concept art done on it you know it's had first round um and now that it's sort of going into production it uh, we need more we need more time we've done some investigations into the corridors i mean for me the sort of corridors are essentially the backbone of a ship you know you start with the corridor from that you then sort of work your way out you know it's kind of like the human body you know you just spread out and just you know everything attaches to those corridors we have also a new ship which is a banu defender which is of the same race so we have to keep in mind that those should go on in hand like we've shown some concept art of the merchantman with the defender and this is a ship that we sold a long time ago so we have the same issues as some older ships which is does it respect the same metrics as we we have with the new ships and does it still make sense like to have those those guns those thrusters those those statistics for the ships does it still make sense in terms of design the banu merchantman is a really specific ship because it's transporting cargo like some other cargo ships like the misc hull series but Especially this is a trading on selling ship. It has a negotiation room inside. And if you have some clients, you can trade with them and sell them stuff directly in your ship. So you don't have to go through a third party like going to a station, sell your stuff. And the other important stuff as well is that unlike some other ships, you can land with your cargo on it. Like this is about the same size of the Polaris, even bigger, but this is not a ship for combat like the Polaris. It's kind of like a flying, a flying bazaar in terms of market, you know, flying market, isn't it? It's been interesting, you know, because obviously we've been dealing with a lot of very sort of mechanical, hard edged kind of styles and aesthetics from the other manufacturers. The Banu were sort of pushing towards um, a more organic, more crafted uh, kind of feel. And this is, obviously, you know, the, obviously this is a challenge. This is going to be a challenge for the guys in, on the production art team to build it and sort of figure out how to turn it into a modular set. We did uh, a large amount of work on the Defender and so, you know, we're hoping to take the, um, the stars that we've established from that, the curved surfaces, the whole sort of organic nature of it, and and sort of transfer that over to the merchantman. All the stats that we put recently on the website uh, should be up to date with what we want for it at this point. For, say, six guns at the front, uh, a top turret that is relatively hidden with size five guns on it. Otherwise, there's no missiles planned and there's no other turret planned. All the guns on all turrets are remote, so there's no need to really look around or whatever. The Banu are pretty good on this side. And there's also the important thing about the Banu race is that basically they are taking the best stuff they can find from other races in the universe. So if they find a good component, they will put it on their ship. They don't really care particularly about history or archaeology or design. So they sort of, they take bits from other, culture, other cultures and stuff. And, but for us, we kind of have to turn it into something that's, that's understandable. Otherwise, it's just like it's a nightmare to build. This is a really big ship. Art is still working on what it should look like inside because this is a new race. We want it to be really different from the humans. We have a lot of floors on the merchantman. If you are at the bottom of the floor, at, uh, at the bottom of the ship, uh, you have basically a big hallway. You can enter the ship and get higher. You got an elevator and not much else. After that, you got some shops. You got the negotiation room, but the negotiation room is more for the VIP clients. If you are a VIP, you can get in the negotiation room. If you are a regular client, you can buy stuff in regular shops. And after that, basically, there's one half for the clients and one half that is for the Banu, where if you are an outsider, you won't get into the ship. A thing that we had to, to be sure about when making the Merchantman, when remaking it, is working with the writers and with the character artist to be sure that it was what the Banu would look like. The Banu race 
was undergoing some rework at the po- uh, at some time. Uh, so we had to work with character artists to be sure that which size uh, the banu were. Uh, so, for example, if you put, if you do hum- human ships, they will all have the same metrics. Like, like when you make a house, they usually have the same doors. They will be this large, this high. If you make an alien that is way bigger, like the Vandal, obviously you can't make it the same way. If you make a ship for the Banu, same thing, it will be a different size. So this is one of the big reasons that the merchantman got bigger, is that the Banu are bigger, well, they are taller than humans. The doors are bigger, generally, so everything is bigger in this ship. This is bigger on the outside, but bigger on the inside as well, and this is something really, really different from any ship that we got in the game right now. The Banu as well have a, a weird... Um, social system where basically the crew live in a different place whether they are pilots or traders they don't live in the same place so we got some old concept art that we've shown to the public that we are keeping the negotiation room is a very important point of the merchantman but the cockpit is also a very important point because the pilots live in the cockpit it's not like human ships where pilots will just go in the cockpit and then go back to their beds. Uh, to, in another room, basically, they sleep in the cockpit with the control sound and stuff like this. We are working with art, with writers, with character artists to be sure that this is correct for the race. Because obviously, when you make a, a human ship, you are thinking in terms of what makes sense for a human plane, a human house, and everything knows, everyone knows how it works. But for an alien ship, we have a bit of a white card. We can do what we want, but we have to respect what we said about the Banu in the past. We can't really invent stuff just because it sounds cool. This is a really big ship, both outside and inside, for an alien race that is friendly with everyone as well. So this is a really important point as well that I wanted to put in the design is that the Banu are a race that trade with the Vandul, which is really special because no race works with the Vandul, usually. Can the Vandul get in the elevator, for example, if they want to trade with the Banu? So this is why it got bigger inside as well. At the moment, we've made a new layout that has been approved. The weight box has been kind of approved as well. We've looked at what would be the big issue in terms of animation, art, code, stuff like this. This is a relatively simple ship mechanically, but this is a really big ship, so we got the issues that we got, like for the address, like there is a big open space. How do you be sure, how, how are you sure that the frame rate will still be good in those big open space? I think at the moment, art is looking at it to be sure that it looks fine on their side and they are happy with the artistic direction that it will take. I really like this ship because this is a ship that is really anticipated for a lot of reasons by the players. This is a ship that we have not released any Banu ship in the game at the moment, unlike the Vandal and the Xian. So this is really important to be sure that we nail the look and feeling of the Banu ship and that we are sure that this will be great and people like this race. The Merchantman, prized among traders, a generational ship so sturdy they're often passed from one era of Banu to the other. It was first offered to backers before many of the tools, techniques, and metrics available now were created. For this reason, the Banu Merchantman currently exists in both the design review phase, where developers are re-examining every aspect of the ship to bring it up to today's standards, as well as occupying the additional concept stage of White Box, where artists are exploring the vast internals of the Merchantman and what it means to be the pride of any Banu fleet. When we have more to share, we'll let you know. Finally, if you haven't already, don't forget to take the Observer Test currently up on the RSI website for your chance to win the brand new bounty hunting ship, the Anvil Hawk. It's no purchase necessary, and the full rules are there for those of you who are interested. Back to you, Chris and Sandy. I'm pretty excited for the Banu Merchantman. That's one of my favorite ships that I actually have. Mm, Very good. So, I think a lot of people are going to be excited for the Merchantman. 
Uh, that's it for day three. Be sure to visit our website to see what rare alien ships and ground vehicles are back on sale. And while you're there, check out our merchandise, which is all 20% off from now until December 4th. And to really celebrate Star Citizen's anniversary, we have our special happy hour coming up this Friday. It will be your chance to vote for the next brand new Drake ship to go into Star Citizen. Yeah, that'll be very cool. So as always, uh, thanks to all our backers and subscribers for your ongoing support. And tune in tomorrow for our next ATV special where we'll be taking a look at Origin Jumpworks. Until then, we will see you around, around the verse. verse. Right, you ready? All right, okay. Three tumbrils, two hammerheads, and a hawk in a pear tree. Oh. All right. All right. <laughs>watching so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen and squadron 42's development please follow us on our social media channels see you soon